all new Wednesday. After a devastating loss. I'm next. I'm all good. The coach's feud. What's with the tough guy look? It's you, embarrassing. You're man. embarrassed. It boils over. Second fight and these guys are ready to kill each other. And the house erupts. But when the fight hits the cage, one big mistake. Too much is on the line. Cost a team. Everything. The Ultimate Fighter. All new Wednesday at 10, only on Fox Sports 1. Welcome to the Bookie Beatdown Tough 21 ATT versus Black Zillions Fantasy Breakdown. That's a mouthful right there. Paul Shaughnessy and Cody Saftik here with you. All right, so the uh, first episode's in the books there. The I feel as though the rules that we set worked out pretty well. It was uh, not everybody's scores, but you don't really want everybody's score. And that's what's going to differentiate the real uh, pure performers from the, from the low-down nothings. So uh, who is somebody that you were most impressed with uh, after this week? Well, in terms of the top score being uh, Usman, obviously he, he, he won the, the fight, fight, right? He got so. the win. So the win by decision will score you the 20 yeah. points. And, uh, and, you know, a little bit of swear word, a little bit of thanking God. So so good way to, a good balance of points. That Total of 30, 35 points for uh, Kamaru Usman. So teams that are week. doing, that are currently doing very good are the teams that possess Usman. You would know you have Usman. But I was not very impressed with him in his actual fight. I mean, yes, against Michael Graves, he's able to get the takedown over and over, but Craze at 4-0 was very inexperienced, and Usman was being very touted as, oh, this guy's already UFC caliber, he's already UFC made. The fact is, it wasn't an easy fight for him. He did take some shots, and uh, moving forward, I don't think he's a lock to win every single time. So Usman was saying I don't that have him on my team, but uh, I... Nah, you wish you had him yeah, on your know. team. I don't know. I got good picks. Uh, you know, Usman was saying before that fight, he he figured that Graves is probably number three or four on that team. So Graves you look at you good. have Carl, you got Coy. We didn't even have and Graves then in the top in the top bracket of people. Well, no, that's because he was under twenty five. That was the only reason he ended up in that bracket. To be perfectly honest, fair enough. He probably would have ended up in that bracket regardless because we we knew he was kind of green based on looking on tape and yada yada yada. At the end of the day, what we should really be talking about is the fact that the guy sitting right here is in first place yeah, after cheat. one week. I didn't cheat. I'm kidding. I didn't cheat. I suppose when you make the rules and you tabul- tabulate the points, it gives me a bit of an advantage here. So people have to, uh, you know, get it together. Start uh, picking up some points and uh, maybe maybe well, maybe crack into my league because 85 points week one. Oh yeah, running away well, with Usman it. Well, right did now. have a good week, but another good takeaway that I had was Sabah Hamasi. He's going to be guaranteed yep. points moving forward because the guy clearly likes to hang out without a shirt in the hands. Always. That's score you points. He l- enjoys to swear, and we saw. He has bro in his vocabulary. Mm-hmm. So those three things, coupled with the fact that he's a decent fighter in his own right at 8-4, and four, he's probably going to score some points, and even if he loses his fight, he's going to hang out and score probably 10-15 to 15 per week. Well, and see, and that's the thing about it, is that these guys can only fight a certain amount of times. I suppose the new rules allow them, they could fight every single time, but that's not going to happen. And they need to have at least two fights to get into the finals. But you need the guys like Saba Hamasi on your team that are scoring 15 points on weeks that they're not fighting. They're not doing anything, and they're still scoring points like that. Uh, one person I was a little bit un, unimpressed with, or I feel as though there's going to be points in the future from him, but uh, this episode, for whatever reason, things just didn't fall in the right place for him, was uh, Steve Montgomery. Because he had lots of camera time. He never said bro, never had his language censored, uh, didn't wasn't shirtless in a uh, in a normal human a area swear. to what yeah, I saw yeah. no death threats anything like that but he he was uh, he I, I think he's gonna be able to score some points in the coming episodes uh, a little teaser that they gave us uh, they have uh, Glenn Robinson and uh, Dan Lambert episode two they're gonna be uh, getting off. at it a bit you can see that Glenn Robinson will end up finally scoring points after being held pointless in week one. Dan Lambert seems like the runaway best coach here, though. Yeah, you would definitely assume so. That's one of the rules that we should change moving forward. Obviously, we agreed not to change any of the rules in this current season, but if you're the coach's fighter, if the fighter wins, the coach should have got five points or something. Yeah. So he should have gotten points in that regard. He did not, so we really need him to start swearing. And the, the teaser for episode two, which we will watch on Wednesday night, uh, he's definitely going to get some swear words in. So that's some points definitely so there's five points to there. be scored. And the thing is, the more the more cocky if he, he gets, if, if his fighters do win, the more cocky he gets, maybe he's going to be able to, uh, to make some death threats of his own. We, we don't know, but maybe. it certainly seems like... 
like Lambert's the better coach here because you know he's he's a proven coach first of all, but also he he enjoys swearing and the death threat. I mean, uh, I don't want to say that one came out of left field because we we did see it on the promo, but uh, the way he said, it, you know, we can we can bury it. I'll he meant bury it. it right between his shoulders. I'll bury a hatchet hatchet right between his shoulders. Said Dan Lambert, scoring him ten points. And then obviously multiple times over the course of the episode, he had his language censored, which gave him another five points. Obviously, you only get your language censored points, or actually basically any of these points, once per episode. Otherwise, you know, Nathan Coy, for instance, was saying bro left, right, and center. Oh, yeah, I know. If he's he another was- guy who I think he's kind of flew under the radar. He was in that group number one. So a lot of people were looking at, okay, who are the best fighters here? Steve Carl. Um, a lot of people went with the upside with uh, Kamaru Usman. Um, but but Koi could be a guy who's scoring 10 points, maybe even 15. Pulling a sub, sub yeah. Ahamasi and, and he had on the odd he was week. down to fight 12 times in the house. So, exactly. I mean, if his body holds up, I know he's a no, bit of an older fighter, but yep. if his body holds up, he's clearly one of the leaders 100%. on the team. He can definitely score. And one thing that you and I discussed while we were watching the episode and scoring down the, the, the points is that a guy like Nathan Koi, he's saying, bro, he's swearing, he's going to get FaceTime. Uh, a guy like Saba Hamasi, uh, likewise, he's going to be swearing. He's going to, you know, He's going to have a bit of an attitude. He's going to get FaceTime. Even a guy like Eric Montgomery, who's not swearing, who's not really Steve, stirring the yeah. pot. Sorry, st- Steve Montgomery. Not stirring the pot by no means, but he's still going to get FaceTime. The guys that aren't going to get any FaceTime are the foreign fighters on the mm-hmm. show who don't speak great English. So I got a guy like Andrews Nakahara, who's a, a Japanese-Brazilian fighter. And we even seen, like, Vincent Luque. Like, where was this guy to be found during the episode? Because there were a bunch of them, man. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a little afraid that, man, it's maybe some of these foreigners Uro, are not going to be Jurisic? I did I, I didn't. And he's I don't, on my team. I don't think I saw <laughs> him a either. single time that episode. Besides that little lead-in, just like, oh, yeah, Jurisic's going to be on the team. So Besides of, that, I didn't see him once. In terms of takeaways and lessons that I've learned from episode one, it's like, hmm, you know what? Maybe I, 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 I played an overemphasis on the actual skill and underemphasis on how these guys would actually react in the house. And we saw even just some of the guys from the Black Zillions, uh, Jackson, what's his first name? Jason, Jason Jackson. Jason Jackson. I saw, hmm, you know what? Maybe this this guy's got personality. And even if he loses his fight, he can be one of those Saba Hamasi type guys that stays in the house and scores some points in the back end. So a little, little worried about some of the foreign guys scoring uh, some big points on the personality side of things. Jason Jackson's a guy who could score some points. Uh, he was very close on a couple instances. I, or, or I felt, thing, really. I felt that way, but what ended up happening is he was a little bit too PG for the rules that we've set in place here, and he wasn't able to land any points. But I think as the guys live in the house together and they start to get more sick of each other, that uh, Jason Jackson will probably be a pretty consistent scorer uh, down down the stretch. Uh, but at the end of the episode there, Kamaru Usman wins, Hater Hassam. Not having call it. Call me out next. <laughs> he should have said, "Call me out next, bro." That would have been great. Probably. Well, I, I think, think he had already sw- he had already landed some bro points he's before that. He got swear that. points or bro points. Uh, he had bro points and oh, language bro. censored. He had both. He had oh, ten nice. points. Hater's gonna be good. Hater looked really fired up. He looked real aggressive. Yep. He looked like the kind of guy that took his team losing personally. So I like it. I like the fire in him. The the one issue that he's gonna have now is if I'm Glenn Robinson and in uh, the Black Zillions. I don't want to throw Hater Hassan in there. Right? I mean, ATT is probably going to try to get him in right away, so they're going to have to counter with one of their good, be- their, their better guys, I should say. So this so one could be uh, very interesting. I would expect that ATT wants to get Hater Hassan in very soon, so maybe he'll come up on Wednesday's episode. Yep, I agree with that fully. Uh, any other takeaways that you've got from uh, this week's episode? No, this week's episode, it was good. I mean, the guys, the, the favorites of the show, the guys like the Steve Carls, which uh, just from skimming on through some of the teams that people picked, a lot of people, myself included, have yep. Steve Carl. He's obviously one of the, the front runs from the show, but not a whole lot of FaceTime in episode one, and, and that's not to say that's how the episode's going to go. The, the guys are going to score the most points when they're getting those little one-on-ones, the little time on the episodes they're fighting. A guy like Kamaru Usman, he was outside, he was praying, and he thanked God. That had God scoring points right there. You have yep. Usman, you had some God scoring points. But and he said that not, he was doing it for his family. Yeah, you know what though? Graves had the same thing, but nothing ever actually really came through because he just... He was so close, but he just missed the mark on a lot of these. And it's a lot of these things, it's, you know, they have to say the exact phrase or they have to do the exact action. It's like it can be really close, but he didn't quite get it. So Graves, even though he had all of that screen time, he only got five points for well, a guy like Usman, uh, language Usman. censored more than likely prays every single day. He's probably doing his little meditation, his little praying and all that. So he probably thanks God 
every single episode. However, if he's not fighting everything every single episode, that stuff's going to get edited out, right? Is so, it though? I believe so. I think he's going to be no thanking point. God all the time. They're not going to care about him if he's not fighting in that episode. Saying he's doing it for his family. No, if it's Montgomery. Saying bro. Yeah, whatever. You, you're saying that because you have censored. Him. Hey, he's, he's going he's to be bust. You're, you're just lucky you're in in first place for now. But me for and my thirty-five now, points. Me and my thirty-five points. Buddy, we're my, moving my up and team, up, pal. It doesn't matter. It's the first episode. Nobody's catching me at this point. That's yeah, for damn sure. Well, uh, just yeah, breaking me. down the uh, the the top three from week one and overall, obviously. Uh, every week I'll give you guys the top three. But uh, we've got uh, Paul Shaughnessy. That guy sounds handsome. He's at first in first place with uh, eighty-five points. You got Mark Amphavanasuk. Amphavanasuk. I'm sure I butchered that one. He's got eighty points. Good work, Mark. And we got a tie between Brett Apley and Giaku Toteka at uh, seventy-five points each. Yeah. Very yeah. international <laughs> game. Very international league. We have around sixty-five people in this pool, so it's uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. Looking forward to more action, and uh, the teaser let us know that the wheels are going to start to fall off. People are going to stop being nice and start getting real, as as people would say. And apparently the wheels are starting to fall off of Paul Shaughnessy's <laughs> fantasy team. Uh-oh. I don't think so, The man. rest of us, we're going to pass Paul. Don't you worry. I'm pretty happy with how things have gone. Anyway, that's all the time that we have for now. Hope you enjoyed the show. This will be a weekly occurrence here. Where we'll break down, you know, the points that were scored, any little takeaways that we have. But, um, yeah, I hope you, hope you enjoy it. Just a quick little 10-minute hit. Um, until next week, uh, good luck out there.